everybody. Welcome back to the Flatten Your Fear Summit. I'm really excited today to talk to you more about getting past those things that would hold you back and keep you from your purpose and your destiny. We need to deal with our fear. So today we've got some power in the house today with Rich Keller. Rich, welcome to the summit. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so grateful to be here. So I want to get into all of this because you have so much to offer. But before we dive into some of the work you do, first, tell everybody who you are, what you do, and let's get into some of your backstory. Okay. So I like to tell everyone that I'm a recovering corporate brand marketing executive. That's a lot of words. But <laughs> um, at 50 years old, I walked away and quit my career, which we'll get into, which, by the way, is a lot of fear. A lot of fear. Um, but what I do now is I disrupt the way people think about themselves so they can discover who they are wow. and let who they are drive what they do. And I help them discover who they are in one word. That's it. Wow. You just heard one word. And I define that one word as the core value that you give to the world to improve the lives of others. Nice. I That's love simple. it. I love it. And so I'd love to get into you know, how this all came to be by sharing my story because yeah. really um, branding, if you build a personal brand, it's about your story. And yeah. it's about what you give to the world. And I realized through my journey why I'm doing what I'm doing today. So um, so it starts at 26 years old when I woke up with a cancer diagnosis. Wow. And if there's one lesson that I learned from hearing the words, you have testicular cancer, wow. it's this. Life is short. Yeah. And for me, that meant wrestling with the question, how do I want to be remembered much earlier than probably most people? Sure. And I always wanted to have an impact on others, but I didn't have the courage or the pathway to do it, Yeah. quite frankly. And in fall of 2017, I had turned 50, and I did something on the fly um, with zero thought. And as I like to say, oh, my wife says, a lot of moxie. <laughs> I love moxie. That's great. Oh, yeah. I was, um, I was getting a performance report of review at work. Um, I was the head of marketing for a lingerie company. And the report was so bad. It was so unexpected. I did. I mean, I was floored that I literally said to the CEO, I think you gave the wrong report. And he, <laughs> <That's goes, "No." laughs> he goes, no, 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 that's you. That's you. And I got up, I closed the door and I quit my career right on the spot, wow. like right on the spot. And I have to say, if I had asked 10 people about that, they all would have said, don't do it. Sure. But as you'll learn, I'm a catalyst. That's my one word. Yeah. That was actually very much within my character. Yeah. And the reason I literally walked away, I walked away from a high salary. I'm sure. <laughs> a fancy job title and security, long-term yeah. security. And I did it because I couldn't be the cookie cutter marketer they wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And I just realized at that point, it was time for me to take control. And I'm going to be very frank. I had no idea what I was going to do next. And I didn't even tell my wife until I got home that night that I did oh it, obviously. God. This is a big thing at 50 years old. I mean, yeah. we're talking about a far along in your career. And you yeah. guys as a family are, you know, depending on all yeah. of what brings yeah. to the table with that. So that's my, amazing. Yeah, my kids are getting ready to go to college. Oh. And, and my wife said to me, I'll never forget it. She's like, congratulations, now go change the world. And I'm like, excuse uh, me? I'm just like, excuse me? And she said, you know, walk the talk. And the truth is, this is why this is so important for your listeners to hear. I wanted her to tell me I was crazy. Yeah. I wanted her to give me a week to go get another job or I'm out because yeah. I didn't have the confidence. So I thought, oh, she's not going to tell me to go like change the world. <laughs> And so I, I asked myself, what's next? What's you know the million dollar question? What am I gonna do next? And I had spent most of my adult life believing two things about myself. I defined myself by being a cancer survivor. And I also defined myself by my career, which a yeah. lot of people do. We're all guilty of that. Yeah. And true. because I had turned 50 and I wanted, honestly, I wanted my life to be lived by my purpose. Like I wanted to make an impact in the world. And I finally, you know, was starting to come to terms with that. And so I did what everybody asked me to do, which is I, you know, I had conversations with mentors, with friends, um, my therapist, family, yeah. 
And I did one thing that I encourage everyone to do. I discovered my purpose, which sounds uh -huh. like everybody. But he says, oh, you know, that sounds so, you know, foofy and, you know, no, like, you so know, pie funny. in the sky. And it's not. And my purpose mm -hmm. is simply to help young adults reach their goals and dreams quicker than I did. Ooh, That's I like it. This. That's it. And when I really sat down and, and thought about that, I did say to myself, okay, now, now what do you do? Like, you don't just snap your fingers and go, okay. Right. I this. wish. Right. <laughs> right. Here I am, world. <laughs> right. But I will tell you, if you surrender to the process, yeah. like I did. Yeah amazing things will happen. So literally I had a conversation with my son um, a, a, a while back before I quit my career that I thought of as I wrote this purpose. And I want to mm. tell you a little bit about this story because this okay. is the story that got me where I am today. So he was applying to college. He came into the kitchen and he said to me, can you help me prepare for my alumni interviews? And I said, of course, my career is in marketing. Of course right. I'm going to do that. And I asked him one question, Elizabeth, one that would change in the moment I wrote that purpose statement and I thought back to this story, that one question changed the whole game. And the question was in the kitchen, tell me about yourself. Yeah. Which is the hardest question for people to answer because most people will start with what they do because right. they have their identity caught up in do. And so if they don't work, they're like, oh my God, what am I going to say? I'm a loser. I have no <laughs> life. And right. we all go through it. And so I, he said to me, I don't know how to answer that question. And I said, just tell me anything. And he said, I don't know. I'm a senior in high school. I study, I play video games. I like sports. And at that moment, I realized he was sharing all the things he did. He had yeah. no idea who he was who at he his was. core. No right. idea. Right. No idea. And so at my table, the kitchen, literally in the kitchen, yeah. this is where people think it's like, you know, I went that's, to school. No, in no, the kitchen. No, that's where it happens. That's where it happens. I, I thought to myself, maybe I can change the way people think about themselves the same exact way I did for all the companies I worked for, all the products I worked for right. at the companies that I was at. So I had a career in marketing for 25 years, brand marketing. I worked yeah. at Nabisco, Kraft Foods, Cadbury, Godiva. And I literally created this approach, which yeah. I call the core value, one word approach. To, to branding, right? To brand. Yeah, to product. brand, to right. successfully brand, uh, to success successfully craft, craft a brand identity for all the brands I worked on in one word, one yeah. word. And the one word is literally the core value that the brand brings to your life because we buy brands, we yes. exchange money for brands. You go to yes. the supermarket, you buy products, they deliver a core value to you. Yeah. If the value is there, you'll buy it again. If not, you never buy it again. Yeah. And and if, I, if there's one thing I know, I know this from my career, it's that your product is not your brand. Right. So what you do is not your brand. That's right. Your brand is your core value. And mm -hmm. what you do is you use your product or you use what you do to drive that core value. Yep. And so I'm sitting in the kitchen and I, I, I literally said to myself, in one word, billion dollar brands are born. The apples of the world, the Starbucks, the Spanx, the Doritos of the world. And so I wrote down on a piece of paper in the kitchen, one word approach. Wow. And I said to myself, I think I can help Zach discover his core value in one word. And then he can craft his interviews and his college application. Now, let me tell you something. That was not an easy thing to convince him to do. Sure. Because I think he was so sorry that he asked me for help. He's like, Dad, yeah. I just, I just <laughs> wanted some help on. But I, I convinced him that he can get out of that application pile which is in the thousands like the yeah. forty thousands. yeah he worked with me i had no idea at the time how to like do it on paper it was all in my head from all the career work i did and he went with me on it and i gotta tell you something magical really happened he discovered his core value what he gives to the world and his word is perseverance this is a nice. kid who never gives up never gives up. If you want somebody on the team to push that ship, he's your guy. Yeah. And what I did at that point was I said to him, I now want you to imagine that you're in front of the admissions committee at any school you apply to. I want you to imagine you have a five minute interview and tell them a story that demonstrates how you live your core value. Cause that's what you need to do in interviews. You need to yeah. demonstrate <clears throat> and how you demonstrate it is all the things you do. Yeah. And so he wrote a story for his applications about a campfire event 
at sleepaway camp. This is a kid who went to camp every summer. He didn't solve world hunger. He didn't go to Guatemala to you yeah. know, help the refugees. He didn't do any of that. He literally right. went to camp every summer to be a kid. And he got into Cornell University. Wow. And the day that his acceptance arrived, I thought back to that purpose statement. I'm in the kitchen and I rent, I said to myself, wait a minute, maybe I can go out and transform a yeah. million lives one word yeah. at a time. I literally wrote that on a piece of paper. I'm a marketer. Oh, I, I wrote that on a piece of paper. I and I looked at my wife and I said, I think I can really go out there and help the next generation, young adults, anybody discover who they are. Because here's the thing, we just want to be seen, heard, and valued. So and true. We don't know who we are. Like we yeah. go through life and the only time we determine who we are is during a crisis, during yep. a job loss, an illness. I had cancer. My wife is a nine year survivor. I had many moments with her when she was going through treatment saying, who am I? Mm. You know, we, and, and, and it's at that moment when you do that, which is the fear, your brain isn't in, in the normal drive of life. And so if you take the time to reflect and do the work and discover what is your core value? Everybody has to think like a brand. And yes, if, agreed. And if you think like a brand, you have to ask yourself in the elevator, okay, the elevator pitch, everybody asks you, what's your pitch during the interview? Yeah. You have, everybody has one core value. And let me define what I mean by that. Branding is about giving away your core value to help yeah. others. That's why products are sold in a supermarket. They're helping yeah. you live. Yeah, that's right. So you, you have to do the same thing as a person in that interview, in that job interview, you are being purchased, which people feel very uncomfortable about. They're it's like, I don't, true though. I don't want to be sold. I'm like, you're well, being sold. Yeah. And in 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 exchange for a paycheck, they're gonna you're gonna give them what? Your core values. So if yeah. you think like a brand, yeah, the game changes. And yeah. so when I think back to my word, I'm a catalyst. I quit my career because they were asking me to babysit all day. Yes. And it wasn't worth the money. Yeah. And and yes, I don't I don't advocate that everybody do it the way I did it. But right. but if you believe in my core value, which I do, that is the way to do it. I disrupted myself in order to go out and find what I need to do. So today I chose motivational speaking as my avenue to get my message out because, you know, it's funny when somebody says, you know, describe yourself or who are you? I don't say I'm a motivational speaker. I right. say I'm a catalyst who uses motivational speaking to drive my message that what you do is not who you are, but who you are should drive what you do. Oh my gosh. I can't, I feel like my head's going to bob off because when you talk, I'm like, there's so many things, Rich, seriously. Like, first of all, I branding, everybody's a brand right. and I think we're created so specific and so unique and understanding that. But when I think about the fact that you, if you do the work, especially at a young age, but anytime okay. do the work to define yourself, to figure out that one word, then when you go into a crisis situation, right. when you're challenged, it's something that I believe takes you through because you know who you are right. and you use that strength then to apply to the challenge in front of you. So the time to do it is not in the challenge. The time to do it is, is now before that fear sets in and you question everything because it's about knowing who you are. And a brand that is well done as you did in your career delivers consistently the same. That's and right. we know what to expect from that brand. So we need to know ourselves better, don't we? Well, it's so interesting that you say that because right now during this pandemic and during this this change in the world, yeah. you have to be able to pivot. Yes. And it's so much easier to pivot when you know who you are versus when you only focus on what you do. What do I mean by that? I'm a motivational speaker. There's no stage just to speak on anymore right now. So right. I was able to, because I'm a catalyst, I was able to pivot to webinars, coaching, consulting, podcast hosting, because I'm a catalyst, I didn't live my life saying, well, speaking's over. I guess I don't have anything. And I used right. to feel that way. I used to have my identity caught up in what I do. Yep. And so I always say to people, if you want to pivot 
life is a pivot. Let's just be, let's just talk about that for a second. Life is. is a pivot. You never know where you're going to be when you're going to wake up in the morning with anything like I did with a cancer diagnosis. But if you know who you are, then you can go into any industry because quite honestly, that's what I didn't realize. Like I'm a catalyst. I can disrupt an industry from a brand perspective. I don't need to know the industry. If you teach me the industry, I'll teach you how to brand in a disruptive way. I agree. Way. I agree. Yeah. That's a value. And actually, I think that that's what makes people that have a have a have a, a, a sort of uh, built in nature to be a coach, right? I know that word is overused, but that's right. But you and I know. I think that's somebody who it's not about the fact that they've been in your shoes or been in that, that industry or been in. It's their ability to ask the powerful questions and bring themselves to the situation that changes. The situation and i think we get so okay. stuck in thinking well this is what i do and this is who i've done it before and that defines me so i'm going to stay and then we wake up at 50 years old and we're just so you know in this tiny box and we're so Absolutely. frustrated and we don't see the bigger picture that's right and then the fear sets in because how can i go on the other side yeah where where honestly life really begins i mean so many of my friends said to me what did you do that's crazy <laughs> and then and then they would say and your wife said it was okay, as, as if I needed permission, which right. is, you know, obviously, I, I'm right. glad that she's supportive because you can't do it without a support system. Agreed. But I will tell you the one other thing that's really interesting, and I really want you listeners to get this, so many people are afraid to do the work. Yes. They're like, I have a program and I always say it's a safe zone. This is, when you work with me, it is your moment to be Beyonce and put a ring on it. I mean, seriously, <laughs> because that's the way I can get the core value out yeah. of you. Because you, if you don't feel amazing about yourself, how are you expecting an interviewer to hire you and feel what you don't feel? So true. Right. And so yeah. when I'm done with people, they're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. I'm like, yeah, because we just, you need to know who you are to be seen, heard, and valued. And everybody has value. I don't care if you stay home for the rest of your life. I don't care if you work in your backyard. I don't care if you run the world. Everybody is born with one core value, born, yes. born. And I help get that out of you. You know, I, I really right now want every parent to invest in this for their high school senior, right? Or for their college age. I mean, if you okay. think about we spend so much money and resources on getting better test scores or getting to right. getting your essay written. Right. If you took, and it's not that much, if you took that money, right. part of that money, and you said, hey, you know, to your kid, I want you to understand your core value. This right. is amazing. You're 18 years old. I want you to do this work so that you can present actually who you are. To me, this is a no brainer at every age, but that's something I think that should be part I want you to be part of the process of graduating and going to the next stage in life, right? Well, I, I work with a lot of high school seniors right now yeah. that, are, that apply to college, and it's exactly right. We The essay, the first essay, which is the college personal statement, tell me about yourself. Yeah. And people think, well, I don't really have anything amazing that I did. They don't care if you sit in the backyard on Saturday and look at the green grass. Tell me why you're doing that. Are you reminiscing? Are you meditating? They just, and by the way, the one thing I think that's really important at the end of this that I, I always tell the people I work with, you are a guide, not a hero of your story. Mm -hmm. You are, branding is about being the guide. We are servants. We serve others. Yeah. So if you come into any situation from a brand perspective as the guide, guide your message into people's hands, the audience. Yeah. I am not a hero on stage. I am a guide. The yeah. audience needs my message and they're the hero if they find me. Yes. And that's what I tell people. Like Everybody's like, I'm afraid to put myself out there because I don't want to do the selfies and I don't want to boast about myself. This is not about bragging about you. This is about no. telling people what your, value, your core value is, right. giving it away, yes. and people will flock to you because they need the help. Yes, it's it. about serving. It, it that's part of purpose. Otherwise, purpose right. means nothing. And I, I think about um, the the fear that we feel when we don't know who we are. Do we that's even right. recognize that? I mean, it's uh, our inability to communicate that is scary, and our inability. So, if if life goes perfectly, which it never does, <laughs> if life is a straight line, which it never is then do I need to do all of this? Maybe not. Maybe it's just, you know, right. the experience of life, but the, here's the reality. We never know That's when that, right. 
is going to happen for you at a young age, a major curve at age 26, that sort of, you know, I say probably happened to you. You used it for the good. best thing that ever happened to yes. me. And the reason that and so many people will look at me and say, really? And my wife who had advanced breast cancer at 43 and alive nine years later, wow. best thing that ever happened to both of us. Why? Because that was the wake up call to leave the earth giving back impact. Yes. And I'm lucky because most people don't get that until much later in life. And then they go shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yeah. And I have better relationships with my kids, my friends, my, my, my community, all because I had that moment. And now I want to teach people not to wait for that moment. That's what I don't wait for that. Don't wait for that. We don't need that. Right. And I mean, I think people can relate to this with the shutdown. You know, a lot of people are saying now that benefit of spending time together and the schedule is lightning and I'm, and, and and I'm agreeing with that, but I'm thinking also, did we have to have that forced upon us? And it's human nature that we wait for that to happen. But why wait? Every single person was created with purpose for a reason and And value. uh, something to bring to serve another person. And and it's not, you don't chase the success. You don't chase the money. You don't chase right. the results. You chase the serving. How can That's I serve it. better? I always say engage first, sell second, and you will sell a hell of a lot more. Yeah. And the reason is because everybody buys human connection. Yes. You, you don't pick a realtor out of a group and say, buy me a house. You got to get to know the realtor who's then going to go and what? Find you your home to make memories. It's That's about right. human connection. I will also tell you, people will do my program and then I'll go over it with them. And they're like, I wrote that. We don't even listen to what we wrote. We (laughs) don't even, I'm like, I didn't write that. You did. They're like, wow. I go, you're not even listening to how confident you're writing. And yet you're telling me, and they're like, you're right. And I go in the mirror right now and repeat after me. Cause that's all it is, by the way, it's repetitive behavior. It's habit forming. It's I get up every morning and I say, I'm a catalyst. I'm here to help young adults reach their goals and dreams quicker than I did. I, I say it every morning. You have to. Yeah, this I is love not a that. one and done. No, it's not. And, and and so one of the things that I often say, because we go back to childhood, you know, I really believe that we are not born with these limitations, right? right. So I say that as adults, we spend a lot of time trying to get back to who we were before the world told us otherwise. So, so, you know, that, that fear sets in where we make a mistake or somebody tells us something limiting or experiences that we go through and, and, and we collect all this in our spirit and then we start to limit ourselves. And so we spend our adulthood trying to figure out, well, who was I? Guess what? You were put here, all of that, but it just starts to erode through the difficulty of life. And so it's getting back to that, right? Cool. In my program, I have a correlation between what you wanted to be as a kid and who your core value is. Yeah. And I always wanted to be a talk show host as a kid. That was a gig. <laughs> and today I'm a motivational speaker. I always wanted to give away. I didn't know this. I didn't have the words, but I always wanted to help others win. I'd like to give. And so you're exactly right. We poison it over time, which is not wrong. It's just, it's life. It's the titles, it's the materiality. And it's all the things that I was guilty of. I mean, I'm you know, 50, I changed my game. People should change their game at 20. Know yes. who you are, know, yes. pack a bag, get on, get your suitcase and go live life according to who you are, not what you do. Yes, and don't wait for that to happen. I, I'm, I'm kind of laughing. Um, as you say about the childhood though, because I I see that as well. Like certain things I'm doing now, I absolutely was doing that. However, one thing I have to say, it's a funny story though. I always wanted to be an Olympic figure skater, right? (laughs) Always, like that's what I wanted to be. And so I I, I grew up in Minnesota. So there, you know, everybody skates and I wanted to do this, but in order to get the ice time and the training, it's intense. My mom was like, I love my mom, but she's like, I'm not getting up at 4am and (laughs) taking you to ice time every day. And then she said to me, the clincher, plus honey, when you get older, your thighs will be thick. If you're like, Oh my God. (laughs) And now you're doing triple axles right now. Trust me. And so we laugh about that. And I think, but here's the reality of that story is that um, I always thought I needed to be really good at one thing. And I wanted to be really good at one thing. And I would look at other people, even in my corporate career and older and say, well, you know, this person is, is really good at this, like one thing, like even just being an artist or being known for something. And it took until my 40s. Uh, which I'm now past, uh, <laughs> to understand that I was made more of a generalist for certain reasons, right. right? 
And I'm not going to dive into all that because I'm actually doing this work with you. I'm going to do right. one word. So you I'm are. not going to do it here. That's but it's right. interesting to see sometimes it's not until later that we start to realize, you know, why we were created a certain way. Because we spent all this time thinking that we wanted something that isn't in our we wheelhouse. That's not who we are. Why do we want that? Right. It's you know, it's so interesting. I'm working with somebody right now. We spend our whole lives trying to fit in. Yeah. And then, and we always, and we, we rebel against what actually makes us stand out. And yeah. then when we get older, we realize it's about belonging. It's about yeah. you finding your tribe, not fitting into somebody else's. Oh, and it's God. so full circle. Oh. And I get it. Cause I always tell people in corporate America, I mean, I had a great career. I was successful, but I was a play. I was a musical inside a play. Yes. Like I was in the wrong show. Yes. And I didn't have the courage to get out of it until at that moment where I literally quit. True story. I quit on the spot and I was like, best liberating moment. But I wouldn't have done it if I asked 10 people, should I do it? They would have told me no. Tough. The You're fear would have come right in. You won't eat. The house will cave in. Your kids will not like <laughs> you. And I did it. And guess what? This is the best decade ever, ever. Oh, and you have, so, and I know that you're you're just going to explode in so many ways. And I, and again, fear would have ha had you stay small. And that's fear right. is what keeps you going to get the gold watch at the end. And look, there are some people that that's what they want, or that's one hundred percent. But when it's not you, and and a lot of my audience is is sort of in that time. 40s, 50s, and like, what what am I doing? What is my purpose? Because I took this track and I didn't question it. That's I just right. took it. And it became a prison of sorts, right? Doesn't that Absolutely. happen to us? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And listen, there's so many people out there that when I'm done with them, they're like, I actually am doing the, the right thing. And I'm like, you are, but don't let what you do define you. That's yeah. the message. What yeah. you do is not who you are. Yeah. And I'll give you a really good example. I get a lot of moms that are stayed home and they want to go back to work and they're like, I'm never going to get a job. And I said, what do you mean? Well, I haven't worked in a hundred years. I'm like, oh, well, tell me about yourself. And they say, well, I just came off of an amazing event at my kid's school where I raised $10 million for the charity. Right. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Oh, that's not great. They're like, what do you mean? I go, are you kidding me? What values came out of that? And they're like, oh, I never thought of that because we're so tied up. I don't work. I can't live. Right. Like, who said that? Right. Who told us that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. Who told you that? That work was the only defining thing. I don't know who told us that, but it, it is becoming less and less, fortunately, an embrace right. concept. But it's a trap. It's a trap. Right. And, and then we become afraid to break out of that. And we don't know, is there life out of that? And we That's think right. we have to do what we have to do. And then all of a sudden, we're looking at what is retirement, by the way? What is that? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we're looking at that and we're like, who are we? What did we do? That's right. Don't right. fall into that trap. Do the work as soon as you can. Yeah, take the leap, get over the fear, have the courage. I promise you, I did it. And if I can do it, anybody can. Because really, I was a corporate guy through and through. Yeah. I thought yeah. that. Yeah. And now I'm I'm a catalyst. That It's a whole different game. And I'm just excited to help people. I'm on a mission to transform a million lives. One, one word, word at, a time. at a time. One word at a time. One word at a time. I love it. So I, I have to tell everybody I am doing I'm doing this with Rich. So I'm gonna find my one word. And for me, as a very introspective person, as a mindset coach, you know, you 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 always think you sort of okay, I got myself figured out, but I love doing things that give me that next layer. And so I'm super excited to do that work with you. But I want other people to have the chance to do that. So tell us where you are out there in the <laughs> internet. How do we work with you? How do we find you? Give us so all that so I give out a free link to anybody that wants to call me. Um, it's a free call. You can call me about anything. We could talk about brands. We could talk about yourself. We could talk about my program. The link is go.oncehub.com forward slash Rich Keller. Once again, go.oncehub.com forward slash Rich Keller. You can also go to my website, which is www.therichkeller.com. I couldn't get Rich Keller, so I had to put the in front Why, of it. Rich Keller, <laughs> some consultant that wouldn't pay me for that wouldn't let me, you know, pay him. <laughs> and then, last but not least, I would say um, go to LinkedIn and just type in Rich Keller Catalyst. And I always tell people put your one word as your first word on your profile. And the reason for that is because I get so many people that say to me, "What is that?" And that's my avenue to go right into who I am. I would and love to see all of LinkedIn slowly yeah. change and all you, have the one word. 
you never know. I got to tell you, as crazy as this idea was three years ago when I, like I said, I walked away, so many people, I'm blown away by the simplicity of how they feel when I'm done with them because we all have one core value. And if you know that your confidence will soar or as I say score, which is the name of my platform, stand out, conquer obstacles, reach excellence, all it takes is one word. That's for SCORE, yeah, that's the, the acronym. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. And for everybody listening, you know, this is for all ages, really. I mean, as those of us who are parents of teenagers and as they're heading towards college, and you know, this is the time where you sort of thought you knew who they were, they thought they knew who they were, and everything kind of goes into question mode, doesn't it? And and, and yeah. defining that, it's not so much about getting into college as it is about stepping into life. Because, you know, one of the issues with school is we put everybody in a box. And we That's say, right. get good grades, push the right levers, do the right things. And through that process, very few people say, but who are you? That's right. And I work with a lot of... World, you need to I know. Work with, I work with a lot of people that are, you know, around my age, because yeah. when their kids leave or when they are out of that career that they had been in for many years, a lot of them call me, I don't know what to do next. And it's fear. And I help yeah. them as well, because once you know your story, branding is about knowing your story. That's yeah. it. And yeah. your story is built around your core value because that's what separates us and makes us unique. I love it. I love your message. I buy into it totally. I absolutely think it's the way that we are made. And so everyone needs to do it. And so guys, don't hesitate. Go find Rich's stuff. Uh, there are many ways you can interact with him. And this program, I've just started it. And one of the best things is asking people to describe your unique qualities. That's Let right. me tell you what, they'll make you feel pretty good. when people And most send people it. don't, uh, they can't believe that like people wrote that about me i said yeah. this is what you're this is who you are that is yeah. so powerful and the reason why i ask people to do that is because it helps me understand the gap between how you feel about yourself and what others are saying and that's where we come There's... together and we marry the two and believe me that is when you put a ring on it <laughs> oh my gosh all right well we're gonna we're gonna get that done and then you're gonna come on a podcast and we're gonna talk about it okay same as mine I... you're gonna come on mine yeah Okay, vice versa. We'll go everywhere. But um, I can't cheerlead you enough because I love what you do. It's authentic. Thank and you. Um, it really, really helps people and makes a difference. So I honor you for taking the path that you took Thank you. and recognizing who you were. We no wouldn't matter have met what each age. other. We wouldn't have met if I didn't do this. That's no. the beauty of life. Yeah. You meet people on your journey that is just incredible. And I just want to say thank you for believing in me and having me here and just having our friendship. I think it's incredible. I think it's incredible too. And we're going to do a lot of fun stuff in the future. So guys, I re re listen to this, uh, let it sink in, seek out Rich's, th you know, information and his programs and uh, podcasts and all of that. And we'll put everything on the page, the links and all of that, but, you know, be encouraged because you were created on purpose for a purpose and you are That's unique right. and we need everyone to do that. That's what makes the world better. We need you. Rich needs me. Yeah. I need Rich and we need you to be walking in your purpose. So, Thank you again for coming on. This was awesome. You bet. What is your one word? <laughs> We're, yeah, what is your one word? I can't wait to tell the world. All right, Rich. We'll talk to you soon.